Andrew Lindsay. You host the Batch Report in the USA. You also recap. Bachelor Australia, Bachelorette Australia, Bachelor in Paradise too. And happy holidays to you. It's a great track. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Batch Report, where we are recapping The Bachelor UK, Episode 8. And this week, it is Hometowns. Yep, sure is. Hometowns are probably one of my favorite weeks. I typically, if they do a fantasy suite week, that's usually my top favorite. If they don't do a fantasy suite week, then Hometowns is like top of the line. I like Hometowns because they introduce something that's like, typically more real than the whole bachelor bachelorette experience. And that's like the parents and the friends. And yeah, it's kind of seeing a taste of the contestants lives. And this gives Alex a chance to kind of say, Hey, do I feel like I fit in here? Also, you're seeing people that weren't on camera for Mm -hmm. like three months straight or whatever it was. Yeah. I guess it was only three weeks. Three weeks, one month. But it's weird because Australia, a season takes three to four months. New Zealand, I think, is also two or three months. And then the U.S. and I guess also the U.K. are only like three weeks for the entire thing. Guess you know when you know, right? (laughs) Right. It's like a very rapid, rapid thing. Um, So first up in hometowns, we have Alicia, who's from Essex, which we all know because last week they were going around calling her an Essex tramp. And before Alex even shows up, she tells her family about the kiss with Charlotte T last week and how disrespected she felt in that moment and how she didn't know if everything he'd been telling her was a lie. Like, why would he say he wanted to be with her and then kiss Charlotte and all of this? And her mom actually told her that she needed to be more understanding of where he's at and what like the journey he's going through, which I thought was really interesting. She seemed really upset. Alicia? Yeah. Yeah. And when Alex showed up, she immediately tells him how that kiss made her feel. And I think she was able to kind of speak more openly, but also more concisively than she was during the cocktail party when she was just pissed. Like in the cocktail party, all she could do is like vomit curse words. And I think when he came to the hometown, she was able to sit down and have like an actual conversation about her feelings. I mean, do you think that this is going to like impact his decision down the road? Or I feel like it's like a preamble to what their relationship might be like outside of The Bachelor. I don't know. It could go either way with that, honestly. But they decide they're moving forward, at least. Yeah, he apologizes. But then when he's doing his monologue, he's like saying he doesn't think He doesn't know why he apologized or I'm not exactly sure. I think he basically said it was really crummy of me to kiss her. I regret kissing her, but I also don't know what I'm apologizing for because I'm the bachelor. Yeah. And that's just what happens. So it was kind of that thing where he's like, do I wish I didn't kiss her because it caused all this drama? Yes. But I also don't feel like I need to apologize for kissing her either. But he did apologize. And once they go and meet Alicia's family... Alicia's mom kind of girls Alex a little bit and he told her family that he could end up with her in the end and how he trusts her with his heart like wholeheartedly well her mom Alicia's mom put him on the spot and kind of was like well like what's going on you know and kind of Mm -hmm. made him feel a certain way so he wanted to please her I know, but he has been saying all season how he could see himself just leaving with Alicia at any moment. However, he's saying that at every date, like every turn of this experience, he's been saying that. We're about to get to a date where he says it again. But before that, Alicia and Alex go to the pub. They meet her friends. And I think that was kind of like seeing a little bit of normalcy in her life. Like, oh, this is a pub she frequently goes to. And these are the people she hangs out with. Her friends like kind of grill him, too. So, yeah, all of the friends this season are really on top of it. Next up, we have Robin, 
And they meet at a bar. They play some pool. They FaceTime her parents because her parents are in South Africa, where they just were. Yeah. Which is a little bit weird, but they do a little FaceTime, and she's basically like, you know, I really just want to build on our sexual chemistry, which I think is plain to, like, what she thinks of him. Like, every time he sees a girl, he's like, ooh, pretty, attractive, beautiful. Like, those are always the adjectives he uses for the women. So I think Robin realized that and was like, ooh, I'm going to, like, really hit, like, that, like, check mark for him. Yeah, I think you're right about checking off boxes for him. Although I don't think that she still would be around if she didn't check off the sexual box. For well, him. I think that's the whole reason she's there. Like they really have nothing deeper than that. Yeah. But they do meet up with her friends and her friend Grace starts asking a bunch of really fun questions. And this reminds me of like taco night that my family used to do when someone had a new boyfriend, they would invite them over and then ask them a bunch of really embarrassing questions and try to make them squirm. And I feel like this is exactly what Grace is doing. And then the friends like had written this poem for Alex to read to Robin, which was basically one. And I love you so much poem. And two, it was also like a fart poem. Yeah. And a lot to do with farting. All right. And at the end of the date, he was like, this date was absolutely flawless. And I just don't know where my head is at now. Like it was so phenomenal. And I'm like, okay, great. Like, the person that was on your bottom was now, like, a flawless, phenomenal date. Yeah. So we are about to take a quick break and talk about our sponsors, and we'll be right back for the last two hometowns. If you know me, you know I love games. I love board games. I love card games. I love app games. And one of my favorite app games right now is Switchcraft. It is a match three game that is like to a whole new level. And as you play, you unlock pieces of this beautiful, magical, and gripping graphic novel. It's kind of like a blend of your favorite TV-worthy like writing with your -your choose-your-own-adventure-style narrative and thousands of magical match three levels. So basically, in Switchcraft, you take on the role of a witch at Pendle Hill, which is the world's top academy of witchcraft, and you play your way through hundreds of enchanting match three levels, revealing a dark and winding mystery story. And it all starts with the disappearance of your best friend, and now it's up to you to unravel the mystery of her disappearance using your magical match three skills. I love this game because it is so diverse. They have over 85 characters from a variety of cultural backgrounds, as well as disabled and LGBTQ plus characters. And I feel like the storyline never gets boring. Something else always comes up and it keeps you engaged and excited. So download Switchcraft for free and unlock the magical mystery. One of my favorite ways to stay financially responsible is by checking my credit karma at least once a month and see where my credit score is at and everything else. And what I've realized is you can also get matched with credit cards on Credit Karma. So if you want a new credit card, but you're not sure how to choose, you don't need to apply for the first offer you see in the mail. You can use Credit Karma to help you zero in on the right option for you and apply with more confidence. So if you've ever been rejected for a credit card, which happens way too often, then you can use Karma Confidence Technology with Credit Karma, and they help you apply and see what you can get as far as rewards go, what earns you miles, what earns you cash back, and they look at your credit profile and they show you offers that are tailored specifically to your financial situation. So it'll say, hey, look at this card. You have like an 89% chance of getting approved or a 93% chance or 72% chance. And you can decide which cards to apply to based on the rewards, what your chances of getting approved are. And comparing cards is just super easy on Credit Karma, and it's 100% free and won't affect your credit scores. Credit Karma, create your own karma. If you're ready to find the right card for you, head to Credit Karma and check out the personalized mix of offers today. Go to creditkarma.com or the Credit Karma app to find the card for you. That's creditkarma.com. So for our next hometown, we have Charlotte E, a.k.a. Old Charlotte. We don't call her Old Charlotte because she's old. She's the oldest person there, but that's not the reason why. We call her Old Charlotte because she has been there since the first day versus New Charlotte, who just came in last week. I call her First Charlotte. Oh, First Charlotte. Like the First Lady, but like First Charlotte. Yeah. I like that. 
So on their date, they go ice skating, which he had never been ice skating, which like super surprised me. And this is the first time that they kiss all season. Yeah, she did a really good job of not kissing him. I know Alicia had said at the beginning, remember, she was like, oh, I'm not going to kiss him. I'm not going to kiss him. And she like turned him away like a couple times and then all of a sudden was just kissing him. Yeah. Like, well, they had one date and she couldn't hold herself. Yeah. So this is kind of fun because it's her mom, her niece and then herself. So it's like three women sitting around and then Alex and her mom asks if he's looking for anything long term and like, what is he looking for at the end of all of this? Yeah. She asks him what kind of relationship he's looking for. And he kind of didn't have a solid answer. Yeah, he fumbled over his words a little bit. And then, you know, and she said, oh, you know, father is uh, dead. So <laughs> you're going to be the man said. of the house. They're like, oh, you know, father's dead. You're going to be the man of the house now. Yeah. I mean, that's not how they said it, but essentially that's what they said. So... And he was like, I'd be honored to be the man of the house. But honestly, I don't think he's ready for the responsibility of being, like, the only man in an entire household or, like, family. Well, he did say he was honored. Yeah, but it's uh, there's a difference between being honored to, like, be asked that and actually taking that responsibility. So then she shows off the picture of the dead dad. You don't have to keep calling him the dead dad. It's so, like morbidly i mean they seem like really nice little family and i can see why charlotte is like very protective of her her um, feelings and family and kind of like why she holds herself to a certain standard because she kind of has to be this strong person andrew said that she would make the best bachelorette i think she would make a really good bachelorette and she would like hold the men in her life to a certain standard which is nice yeah, on this show. I like that when they do that. A lot there's just so many bachelorettes that want to see a fight like secretly break out, you know, cuz they like mm-hmm. to be fought over. And I don't know, I think Charlotte has like a certain etiquette about her and she would want like, you know, not so much hostility, I guess. Yeah. So after this, speaking of hostility, there was a lot of hostility towards Charlotte T last week, but not on this date. She is singing opera in a theater, and it blows Alex's mind. Blows his little mind hole. Yeah. So he kisses her in the theater, and then they go off and meet her family. There's Big Dave, her dad. Big Dave and Brother Justin. Yeah. They're very American names. Kind of. Big Dave and Brother Justin. Like, that's very, I don't know. It sounds American. Anyway. They start asking him some hard questions, how many relationships he's had, etc. And then they kind of just cut the date. Like, they don't go too far in depth with her family. And then all of a sudden we see Mark and Alex in the car going to the airport to send one of the girls home. And Mark is sitting in the center back seat. And it's weird. This whole last date transition to the sitting in the back seat with Mark is just really weird. Also, um, he kind of word vomited a little bit. Did that that we were talking about early on in mm-hmm. the season when he basically around Charlotte T is a new like word vomit person. So I don't know how well that's going to like play out in a future relationship. Like he's just infatuated at this point in time. Right. Like she's still really new, especially now that I know it's only a uh, one month ordeal. Yeah. And she came in probably two weeks in or two and a half weeks in like yeah. out of three weeks. That's crazy. So basically they have all the girls at the airport and they say, you're going to Antigua, but only three of you, one of you is going home and they're like, Oh no, someone's going home. And it's like, well, obviously one of you is going to go home. Yeah. Like you knew it was coming, but the rose ceremony starts. First rose goes to new Charlotte, second rose to Alicia and third rose goes to first Charlotte. So that means Robin goes home. She is pissed. She basically storms off and is like, whatever. And Mark tries to get her to come back. And she's like, why? Like, I just had someone tell me that the most phenomenal date with me they've ever had in their entire life. And then they sent me home. Like, what kind of a-hole is this? Like, 
what's he spewing to these other people? Like, I don't want to be here around someone who just like says things like that and then does the opposite. I mean, she had to know she was at the bottom. Yeah, but I do think that he definitely led her on with being like, this is the best date I've ever been on in my entire life. And then sending her home immediately after. Well, he didn't tell her that it was the best date. He had told her it was an amazing date. He said in his confessional. I'm pretty sure he had said it to her, too, because she said, like, in this time, she was like, he said it was the best date ever. So, like, obviously, he had said it to her as well. I think there's, like, a certain amount of um, normalcy to saying, oh, my gosh, this is the best date ever, right? Like, I don't know. It doesn't, like, so if you're taking that at face value, I mean, you have to pay attention to the tone of his voice. And I'm pretty sure she might be toned. She's probably like, I gave you a BJ in the bathroom (laughs) and now you're sending me home. (laughs) That's kind of how I hope that's not how it is, but maybe because that happens on the bachelor. I'm just saying, I I don't don't think that's what happened here necessarily, but like, I know it happens and people get really upset. I don't know if it happens. Uh. So Anyway, I guess that's it. We have finale week next week, and we hope you tune in. Let us know what season we should do next. I was on Wikipedia looking at all the current seasons right now. You know, Croatia's going. Um, I think Sweden has one going on. Denmark has one going on. Belgium, Germany. Like, everyone is popping off with Bachelors right now. So let us know which season you want us to do, and tune in next week.